Hello my friends, welcome to Brown Strings. I'm Henriette and today we're playing The Old Castle from the Fiddle Time Joggers book. Shall we go straight in? I'll count us in for four. One, two, three, four. Notice that whether you play two notes slurred or a minim, both times you use a whole bow. And then when you come across the semi breeze at the end of lines one and two, you slow the bow down. And there is an instruction above this piece that says play this with a singing tone. And that is especially um, for you to work on, on those long semi breeze at the end of lines one and two. And you really want to make sure that you feel the grip of the bow on the strings. So let's practice that open E string at the end of line one, shall we? And I want you to start to feel the grip of the bow on the strings. So we go very slowly. Two, three, four. And do it again. Feel it again. There you go. What do I mean exactly by that? There is a certain resistance that the string gives because the bow is on the string and you want to feel how that goes through the bow. So I'm not just playing on the bow going up and down. Can you hear that? That doesn't have enough body and I really want to concentrate on feeling that grip on the string. That takes practice before you start to feel that, but I like it that this is introduced fairly early on into your playing in this book, and that you want to start to feel that ringing sound through the bow. Now, you might be at a stage where you think, I don't get it, I'm confused, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, come back to this frequently, this idea, and see if you can start to feel it after a while. Um, some people do and some people find that very confusing but don't worry too much about it if that's you it'll come over time if you start to get more feeling through the bow into the strings now let's now play from the beginning and let's now focus especially on the timing of when you change the bow and put your new finger on so i'm going to time it absolutely perfectly from the beginning one two three Four. So let's think for a moment how we can time that really beautifully. So what I'm what I'm after is to avoid this. and my finger change are exactly synchronized so that's what we're aiming for let's start again from the beginning one two three four so much 
much better, you see. Did you notice that you could also look at the bow and your fingers and having that visual aspect as well as what you hear may just be the difference between perfect timing and just about right timing. So let's do it one more time from the beginning and I promise you I won't interrupt you now. One, two, three, four. projects as you know always finishing a last note to the best of your ability and that gives for a little extra polishing of your piece now you may have noticed in the second bar of the last line so that is bar 14 I am placing my first finger on two strings I'm playing a B followed by an E can you see my finger is on two strings at the same time all right so I have to think about that when I put my B down you see at the end of bar 13 I have to think about putting that finger on both strings and not just on the A string so let's play the last line and start on bar 13 and just practice setting that finger down at the start of bar 14 three four You see, this way I practice individual aspects and I practice them, I take them out of this whole piece and I just practice that single thing. So next time when you arrive at the same point, you will know for sure how to use your finger there. So let's have a look at the louds and softs now. Now this piece begins mezzo piano, which means medium soft. That's fairly soft, but maybe not the softest you can do. Remember, we're using whole bows, so you don't necessarily have to go at your quietest. Then the second line is exactly the same. So you keep playing at this level of mezzo piano until you see the next marking. And the next marking you'll find in bar three, where it says mezzo forte. Now mezzo forte is only slightly louder than mezzo piano. So you just make your bow strokes a little bit longer and maybe you come slightly closer to the bridge with your bow. Uh, as well as press a tiny bit harder uh, because in the last line we're then going to go back to how loud we were or how quiet we were I should say in the beginning so then you go a little bit further away from the bridge in the fourth line you use perhaps slightly shorter bows but not very much shorter and you're very light until you hit the penultimate bar where it says ritenuto and ritenuto means hold it back a little bit slow it down a little bit and then I want you to play your last note as quietly as you can because underneath the uh, penultimate bar and the last bar you see diminuendo that is that sort of hairpin thing that takes the volume away and then piano soft 
very soft at the end. So let's put all of this together now. Let's play with perfect timing. Let's play with loud and soft. Let's not forget to put our finger on two strings at the end in the last line. And then let's polish our last note once we get there. After four, one, two, three, four. progress you've made in the space of just a couple of minutes. Well done. Do please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button if you haven't already done so. If you have any questions feel free to write them in the comments section down below this video. I do get to see these comments and I will get back to you. So any questions that you may have, um, any issues let me know and we can get a conversation going. I very much look forward to seeing you again soon and after this song we'll be playing Claire's song. So we skipped that one, I don't know if you've noticed, we skipped that one earlier on and we're coming back to it after this video. So I look forward to seeing you there. Goodbye.